I win. And that is right. Yes, the show today is actually used to do the night show, but it's I'm pretty flexible, so I'm glad you're here with this very basket. I said, Mama Mary, if I may say. <laughs> um, so I've got your bio here, and I'm going to read a little bit so that you get to know a little bit about you. And if you want, we can jump from there. So, as always, welcome to our show, Paranormal Corner with Nikki Ray. I better say that, because sometimes I forget. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this is our first recording, so I hope you all know well. And, uh, so Mary, Master Asset Mary, Mama, Mana Mary, if I say it right, <laughs> is a professional channeler and psychic medium as well. I love talking to fellow psychic mediums. Um, and she is also a professional hypnosis regressionist that um, she works well as experience uh, as well as um, my lessons. Uh, I'm going through hypnosis regression therapy and um, she has been reading professionally for over 10 years and travels all over for psychic uh, fairs and special paracon events. Um, you, you do like gallery readings and everything like that. And you know, how do you um, manage to do what you do? And did you always knew that you were going to go along this path, or did Honey Risley went this way? Well, I think. Um... I really started developing the gift in my early 30s. I kind of always had the gift. When I was growing up, I would see spirit all the time. Um, kind of tried to ignore it because it made me afraid of the dark. I didn't understand it. And then when my grandma passed in my early 30s, I really kind of got into it was what was actually on the other side. And that's when I got my first reading. And I remember her telling me, in that reading, you have a really special gift. It's going to be up to you whether you use it in this lifetime or not. But when you do, it'll be a powerful gift that will help people. And so then I started just taking development classes and meditating as much as I could. That does help. <laughs> well, and it just it just kind of progressed from there of what my purpose is. I think um, we all have our our normal lives and our everyday lives, right? You know, work and whatever else we're doing. Oh yeah. But <laughs> the readings are my passion. Like that's the one thing I couldn't give up. Definitely. Especially if they know you can hear them. And uh, sometimes it's not always easy to, to turn it off. If I may ask a few questions and then we'll share our experiences. Um, I mean, I'm sometimes my closes is open whenever it wants to, it's like, I can't even set boundaries for that matter because they know I can hear them. Do you have any suggestions how we can do about um, setting our boundaries? The, the most really is just setting the rules. It's kind of like spiritual law. The spirit has to listen. So right. I, when my, my number one rule is when I come downstairs to go to the bathroom at 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't want anybody messing with me because literally I'm going pee and I don't want to deal with that kind of drama. Because <laughs> but um, setting that those rules and saying them out loud is actually really helpful, and just learning how to ground your energy and blocking it out so they just can't come in that's helpful. You know, quite often I see spirit everywhere, I can be at work and I'll see spirit walk through. I just choose not to acknowledge them. I see them even at parties. I saw my dad there, I went to, he wasn't too happy I was there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yep. That was the third apparition I've seen in my life. <laughs> it, and yeah, sometimes you see him when you don't want to see him, right? But right. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I've learned that um, not acknowledging them necessarily, more than likely they're going to leave you alone only because you're just seeing spirit. Now, the ones that actually have a message that you need to pass on, they'll bug you. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. 
Sorry, I saw our audio tend to go out. <laughs> Yeah, um, Mary, I'm sorry to tell you all. The uh, audio, I don't know if you hear me, you saw my messages. I wouldn't hear anybody who's chatting in and out of here. There are right. spirits. Oh, yeah, audio, we hear you, but it's going in and out. I just thought I'd let you know. It's just in and out. All right. It, it, it looks like it's picking back up again. But Whew, yeah, sorry, so guys. It's, it's our energy. <laughs> it, it is. Like, <laughs> It's, it's kind of. I'll move, I'll move back. Today. I'll move back. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. So, the, so finally, I told him, I said, okay, he's in his mid 40s. He, he died of cancer. And so my husband finally said, you know what? I, I had a cousin who was in the that. military that, that died of cancer. And then he went away. Sometimes they just want to be acknowledged. Right. You know, it's true because when I saw my, um, my first apparition, uh, it was at my former work of all places, where you least suspect, right? <laughs> and uh, he just looked at me, and I looked at him, and I, he just disappeared. And I never saw him again. So I was like, maybe this, he just wanted to be seen. And I, and I, yeah, and I called it my right doctor supposed to my uh, <laughs> first book, you know, Dr. Pathway. <laughs> he looked like he, was, he died probably when he was running. Oh, good. Probably. Yeah. Sometimes I think, you know, I think people see death and spirit differently than they should. I do. You know, yeah. Most people, most people think, okay, when so they die, they, they cross over and they go to heaven, but that's really not necessarily the case. They're, we're just energy. So when it crosses over, when we cross over, it's just a different form of energy, right? right. Spirit just wants to help us. And they just want that acknowledgement because 99% of the time, spirit's there to connect with us and help and guide us. The more we acknowledge and accept the energy in, you know, the better off we are. That's yeah, true. And um, I really, just to let you know, of course, you know already, but uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed my first past life regression. And, um, you know, I always knew I was afraid of water, but I never knew why until I had me had that experience. Do you want to share a little bit how we, we did this session and then we go from there? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit how I, I, I do my my sessions. It's, yeah. it's sort of like starts off with like a guided meditation, really. And that's to get you relaxed and calm down and get you tuned in. And then I, I put you in a certain space and take you back on a cloud and take you back to a time and place where there's information that is the most important for you. And it's usually a past life. Um, I do the ET regressions. And if it's an ET regression, I take you directly to that experience so that we can go through the experience and you can see what actually happened. Now with you, you, you went into a past life. Right. And <laughs> what's fascinating about that is in that past life, you find a correlation to your fears in the here and now. And that's what the past life regressions are all about, really, is getting past the patterns you can't seem to change no matter what, past the fears you can't change no matter what, or the things that are happening in your life that no matter what, you can't break the cycle, right? So there's always that's a true. correlation between that past life and the here and now, because in that past life are the fears that you're bringing into this present life. And once you figure out why you have that fear, you can cut the cord and let it go. That's that's the best part of healing right there is releasing the fears because the fears do nothing but hold you back. That's true. Yeah, I enjoyed the experience. I mean, I, I tell you, I, you know, I, med I meditate almost daily in running. So I think that's why I was like, it didn't take me long to go in there. <laughs> no, you, you, did, you did very well. So I did Yeah. <laughs> I wonder because I also had gifts. I wonder if that has something to do with that as well. I, I find that people who um, meditate more and who have the natural spiritual gifts, they they always get more out of the experience because they're used to going into that state. Oh, yeah, you know, that's into true. That spiritual realm. Yeah. Yep. And is that a form of channeling? I have a fear of that as well. I don't, 
kind of makes me wonder if you have to give yourself totally to the particular entity or spirit or um because the thing is what the fear i have about channeling well it's it's kind of like channeling in a sense but you're really not giving your yourself up control to My. spirit <laughs> it's to your higher self so it's it's tuning into your higher self and letting your higher self speak for you that's true that's why i think i need to study more about it because that way i won't be so afraid of it <laughs> Yeah, you know, and there's always that natural of, of letting go, of giving up that complete control, because I had the same fear. When I did my regression, it was like I was there, but not there. Right. Where I remember, <laughs> and that's normal for a lot of people, but it's always a guarantee when they listen back to the recording, they always um, get stuff that they don't remember saying. It's like a dream state. You're going into the theta state. We got alpha, which is kind of like oh, a yeah. the confused state. Sort of like um, when you're driving and then all of a sudden, 20 minutes later, you're like, huh, how did I get here? Like, I know I was driving, but I completely phased out for like 20 minutes. That's your alpha state. Um, most people, like they did a, a scientific study and most people out of a whole hour are, are only active in their mind completely for about 15 minutes. Mm. The majority of the time they're in that hypnotic state. That's why they play so many commercials. Um, your, your beta state, that is when you're dreaming, you're getting ready to fall asleep and you're dreaming. So right. during the hypnosis regression, it takes you into more of a theta state where you're in a trance-like state and that's that's how you're able to answer questions more freely and your higher your higher self comes through more easily right and i also like how you give us some forms to fill out i will share specific ones but i like how you do that so that way we you can ask the right questions right to that yeah that yeah, note. that's how it's a good way for me to get to know you for one yeah um and it's a good way for you to tell me exactly what you want to explore yes that helps me um figure out the questions that we want to ask the higher self like what's really important to you you know what really needs to be healed for you um it gives me a better understanding of what you want to get out of the whole session i think one of my questions was was i adopted by ufo and i think i said no i was just yeah. observing or something like that well, yeah, and, and, and typically a lot of people when they they see UFOs are just sightings or their contact is is more um, just contact and never really being taken, you know, more of a conscious contact. Right. So I think that is an important question to ask if somebody's curious about that, especially if they're they're thinking about a traumatic event they, they might have had. I think that's what's really good about regression work is 99% of the people who have had experiences and I take them through regression, they always realize that it's completely something different than what they thought it was. Oh, and wow. that's the most important thing because they heal from it. I had um, a lady maybe a month, a month ago and she want, she had some experiences she wanted to explore and the biggest one was a one that had happened a week prior and she had woke up and there were, she saw the beans around her bed and so she closed her eyes and she said you're not going to take me i refuse to be taken and then she heard um a male voice say just relax and open your eyes and when she opened her eyes she saw the the beans leaving and so but through the regression she realized she was taken but what they did was they took took her to show her where she came from. Oh, wow. And so when she came out of that, we talked about it. She goes, you know, she goes, I haven't been able to sleep for a week. I, I was so scared. She goes, but to realize that it was a good experience and nothing happened, she goes, I can sleep now. So it's one of those situations where your conscious mind remembers the fear, but the subconscious mind helps you remember what actually happened and you release that fear. That's one of my favorite stories. I love that. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Well, yeah, that's just to know they're not all bad. You know, they're mainly that they're just here to help. 
help us? I, I believe so. That's the way I feel. Um, I think just like humans, there's good and bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and they want to take this out. Yeah, they went that a long time yeah. ago. Just open our minds a little bit yeah. and and ex explore the possibilities and find the real answers versus fear-based answers. That's cool. I think for sharing that. Um, is it the same with automatic writing? I know it's easy to buy. Is it also automatic writing? By sharing a little bit with that is yeah um well that is how i tune into spirit um i can do readings without automatic writing but i really enjoy doing the automatic writing for two reasons right um everybody reads with cards and that's not a bad thing but when i do my automatic right. writing all i do is write the person's name down and i just start to write and i enjoy doing it that way because the information i've given that person straight from spirit so there's no questions asked. It's just the information that they needed to hear. And um, it's a way to get out of my own way because I'm pretty opinionated. So sometimes we all do it. We form that opinion before we're actually getting the information. Right. This is a way to get out of my own way and get the straight direct connect with spirit. Uh, my favorite is um, I love reading people when I don't know their names and I know they're getting ready to come. Um, that I prefer not to know people because I get a better reading that way. And it's even better sometimes when I don't know their name. That's and how I, I am, just yeah. write. <laughs> And I just kind of tune myself out and I just start to write and let spirit come through. So it's a it's a form of channeling. I'm starting. Because um, I step out of the way and let them come through. I'm starting to do that now when I remote view for cases. I write down what I hear or, or even start to set a little bit of what I see. A psychic drawing. I'm just starting to do that. <laughs> it's about the same thing, right? Yeah. Psychic drawing or psychic writing is about the same thing. Mm hmm Yeah, they are. Since I can't draw that well, I use mostly the writing. <laughs> I, I start, when I first started reading, it was just straight tarot. And then... Um, I think I had a reading done. And she was a very gifted psychic medium. And I noticed that she had meditated before I got there and, and wrote some things down. And I thought that was interesting. So the people that were coming to me before they'd get there, I started meditating and writing things down and um, realized it was spot on. And so it's just something that kind of evolved over time where now I sit down and when they're in front of me, I just start to write. So I don't really meditate anymore to do it. I just write. Um, and, you know, obviously it was spirit showing me what, what was the best way to get the the most accurate message for the person that I'm reading for. Right. Yeah, it'll take me long now to um, kind of restore the energy with another person. Yep, so you just got to open it up. Right, reading auras. And I want to more about that. I see a little bit of ores, whether it's bright or sometimes I see the colors. <laughs> yeah, typically, I'll see the white around a person. Every once in a while, I'll see colors. Um, I think a lot of times when I'm seeing that color, it's somebody who's going through a lot at the moment. And it just signifies the transformation they're making, you know, whether it's orange, whether it's yellow. You give them information of you know where they can focus their energy to complete that transformation. Yeah, but told my like a dark purple. This <laughs> is very slow. I guess it doesn't have some yeah. abilities. So, my son used to see auras, like when he was like four. He all of a sudden he's like, "Yeah," he goes, "Mom, you have purple all around you." I'm like, "How are you even doing that?" <laughs> Because I just look at the light a few minutes, then I look at somebody and I can see the color around them. I just saw. Like, okay. I just saw a little bit of that. Nope. And like how I do, I don't look directly at the person. I do it off the side. Well. Nope. Yep. <laughs> kind of cross-eyed. <laughs> sure. And the aura is like an energy shield, right? About each. Yeah. Maybe beings or even the objects. 
And it signifies your chakras too, and how how far out your your vibration is. That's true. Yeah. Have you heard of uh, I heard this term before, um, uh, ether energy. Yeah. Um, you do you mind share a little bit about what that is? Yeah. Well, for me, the ether energy is you have your aura, then your spiritual vibration that reaches out. And then when you reach out a little bit further and connected to the spiritual realms, that's your ether energy. So that's it's all the how far the vibration reaches out and connects. That's true. I always wonder what that was. I've never heard it before. <laughs> when I first started to word out energy. Yeah, there's all there's all sorts of terms for it, isn't there? Oh yeah. But I'm like, what? <laughs> it's really all about your energy and where you're connecting and tuning into. And you actually feel it, and then you feel it expand mm -hmm. more. Yeah, and a good way to do that, if you know, if people want to explore feeling that energy, is just starting out with the palms of your hands. It, yeah, and just rubbing it together. I can feel it right now. <laughs> yep. And then make it a ball, and then pulling it out, and make it another ball, and you'll feel that energy between your hands. And the more yeah, you do it, I like to play with it too. You feel it. Yeah, yeah I, I like to share this story about my grandmother. She went to a psychic, right? Um, she didn't take me with her, but the psychic said, no, your grandmother has something with her hands. <laughs> so I thought that's cool. So do you do, do you do Reiki and things like that? Yeah, I've, I've seen the first Reiki. I haven't really finished it yet, but I know there's more, but I'm getting there. <laughs> My friends, little baby, yeah. steps at a time. Yeah, my friends can feel the immediate result whenever I pray with the energy. You know, it's weird. I have a technique I like to use before I stand up. <laughs> so and they can feel the so, results. <laughs> so your your regression. What was your take on your regression? You want to share that a little bit with me? Yeah, because I have all these intense um, UFO settings throughout my life, you know, and um, and nightmares, vivid dreams and nightmares. So I was wondering if that's kind of like those together or something has to deal with the other. I had a recent loss. Um, you know, my late husband, and my father, died a few years ago. Yeah, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry about that. Oh, thanks. They're my angels now. <laughs> oh, they got. Yeah, they definitely are. They, the spirit never goes away. They're just there in a different way. You know, they, they guide us and they help us. Yeah. Now, you're you had refreshed my memory because I've done a lot of regressions. You in your past life, you you died up by water, correct? I think so. Yeah, Did I see a lot of water, like the ocean. Probably. That's right. Yeah. Did you fall off a boat? Possibility or a rock or some or cliff. That's right. You were standing on a rock and you fell off and you couldn't get back onto the rock. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that's why you have a fear of water in this lifetime. Yep. I try not to panic when I can't touch my feet. <laughs> so I need oh. to talk paddle. <laughs> No, I, I totally get it. I, I've i gotten better with it. Like, I hate getting my hands wet. It's usually my excuse not to do the dishes. I try anyway. But I can never um, get out of it. Even, <laughs> for the longest time, I hated taking showers because I don't like water on my face. <laughs> I'm one of those weird people that gets in the water and says, don't splash me. Because <laughs> I don't want to get wet, but I'm in the water. So whatever that means. That's right? how my friend is. <laughs> For the longest time, for years, I took only baths because I couldn't handle huh. the shower being sprayed on my face. I hate, I hate that. Um, gotten a lot better at it now, but I realized uh, I, I had a reading done, and she told me in a past life my name now was the same name I'd had in a past life, and that I was per persecuted in that life. Um, and then my daughter, she messaged me a couple days later, and she's like, did you know that there was a Mary Bassett in the Salem Witch Trials? I was just that, thinking that in my head. Yep, was persecuted as a witch. Because, and then I, 
the, the lady had told me I was waterboarded in that lifetime. So this is like, this huh. is the interesting catch with that. And I researched and I'm like, huh? And it was kind of weird because the picture they had looked similar to me. And my daughter's like, mom, that's just weird. I said, it is weird. <laughs> this is where it gets really weird, okay? My husband had done his family lineage. So he has his family crust, the Bassets. And when we were researching this family line of uh, that of people who got persecuted, it's the same exact family. Oh wow! Literally, it's 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 his family line. So, yeah, that there's there's some validation for a past life for there, but um, and a lot of the names that are in his family lineage, um, uh, are names you know they're names that are being used now, like his daughter Sarah Bassett. She was back there in the Salem Witch Trials with Mary Bassett. And then, um, so I, huh. yeah, that, that explains why I hate water, to be honest. And then, like, on my family side, on my mother's side, there's also, like, Elizabeth Proctor was a Bassett in the Salem Witch Trials until she married John Proctor. Mm. On my side of the family um, is John Proctor. So on my mom's side is John Proctor. On my husband's side are the Bassets. So definitely. That is weird. <laughs> so I've dealt with now from that past life, I'm sure. Yeah, I know our family, uh, we did a little bit of research. Um, we go back, way back to the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my, <laughs> I didn't really say this, but one of my distant cousins was um, John Willis Spoon. I'll see. Yeah. That's cool. Apparently, it was assassinated by uh, President Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> hey. Family history is interesting. It really is. And he was also pretty idea that he did art too. So I was kind of like, where he is, my background is. <laughs> so. Yeah, he did theater, so I did. I kind of did theater in high school, but I didn't stick with it. So I went towards music. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, so do you do a lot of readings? I'm sorry. Do you do a lot of readings? I haven't lately, but yes, I do. Now, how do you read? Uh, I just read what I sense or feel. I'm also empathetic. Empathetic. How do you say it? And with that pathic. <laughs> pathic, yeah. So I can feel like how they're feeling or how um how their loved ones may have passed. Like I say they have a hanging, my throat will tighten for a point I can't talk. And I know there's something that's around their throat. So then I percent You should be right. <laughs> Doing more of those readings. I would love to um, get out more and do some daily readings. I haven't done that far yet. <laughs> do you do events or anything like that? I'm, I'm way out here in California, so we, I don't know if much out here, so unfortunately. Yeah, you should check it out to see if there's anything that pops up. You never know. That's true. You know? I know we have a local library, maybe I can ask them start there. See, mm -hmm. so they have one of my books anyway, so they know who I am. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I put my first book in, at their library. <laughs> oh. So people can check it out. That's cool. Yeah. I, I'm working on a book, but. Oh, congratulations. Well, it's it's finding the time to sit down and actually work on it. I hear you. <laughs> and I, I try in the mornings, but I'm not going to lie. I get up at like 2.45 in the morning oh, wow. before work. And I'm just like, I can't adult at that moment. <laughs> I just can't. I just want to sit there and just try to wake up and drink my coffee. Sometimes that idea is to jot down notes. And then I'll write That's, more in, in my yeah. book. How many books do you have? Right now I have 13. <laughs> oh, you're a busy woman. I'm working on, Man. Working on 14 and 15. <laughs> what was, what's the first one that you've written? Uh, what's the first title? It's called Dark Pathways. 
Why Paranormal Diaries? I don't know. It's mainly about my uh, first experiences in the paranormal. Gotcha. So, like, like the very beginning of it. Yeah, like hell, yes, Tony and everything. Wow. What's your? What was your scariest paranormal? Oh, I have so many. <laughs> I used to see that apparition of the the runner that I saw. Can you just? He made a lot of noise, a lot of posters I saw. No, I call him noisy ghost. <laughs> uh-huh. He was making all the banging sounds in the last room. So when I got up, of course it stopped. But when I sit back down, it was start up again. <laughs> and then when I turned around, he was there, right there, right in my face. <laughs> it was sort of like you, when he made the noise and he got up, he's like, I was just kidding. Yeah. I take it back. So he was definitely intelligent um, when he, you know, he interact with, you know, with the living. <laughs> so like, had, did you have like, like paranormal experiences like from a, like a really young age? I possibly did. I don't remember that much. <laughs> I remember um, like the first ones I can remember, I was probably about three years old and very scared of the dark didn't really recognize what I was experiencing. So I just, you know, thought they were monsters. But I remember um, I would lay in my brother's room and I would hear spirit come up over and over again, stomping up the stairs and going to the club. And um, I, at that point in time, I didn't really realize, you know, I just ignore it and go back to sleep. I was three, but I do remember a funny, a funny time was, um, I was just having one of those experiences. My brother had called me down. He's like, just relax. There's no monsters. You know, it's all right. Then all of a sudden I heard rocks start hitting the window and uh, huh. started screaming. Didn't realize that the rocks were my brother's girlfriend throwing the stones into his window oh, no. to get his attention. <laughs> then he got caught by my mom because his girlfriend was trying to sneak into the house and he got grounded. But we did. We had... um. We had mostly, there was like a male and female spirit in the house that I was growing up. Um, never really saw much of the male, but you would the female. Um, we would have people come and stay once and then never come back again. Never really bothered me as I got older. I think um, the biggest thing that I would get is if I was downstairs, you'd hear walking upstairs for no reason or a door shut. I would hear them call my name. And that's how I first kind of started thinking that it was a medium because I would hear the spirit talking to me, right. go downstairs, and say, what do you want? And my parents would be like, we didn't call you. Uh, but oh, I, I hate that. Like a couple of, of sightings of the female. I remember um, there was one time my cousin was upstairs and I was all the way downstairs and I could hear walking back and forth. And I remember, I remember thinking, and he's got to stop walking back and forth. He's going to wake up my dad and my dad's going to be mad. And I remember going up the stairs and getting ready to holler at my cousin. And he's sitting in my room and his face, he's like broke out into a cold sweat and his face is white. And he was just shaking. Huh. And he's like, he, literally, he saw the woman walk up the stairs, look at him, and she walked into the wall. I never had that visual. It was more hearing and feeling. Um, but several people have talked about having those experiences my dad did he said that he remembered one night coming downstairs going to the kitchen and he saw someone he saw a female standing on the front porch and when he went to see what was going on she was gone my sister oh, wow. used to wake me up being like 12 years old and she'd come wake me up and she goes there's somebody walking in the house go see what it is and i'm like literally because i'm 12 it's just just the ghost go back to sleep it'll go away just ignore it but <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had a few like I, that. I mean, I've heard spirits at one time. Um, I think my grandparents and my dad was there at the time. And um, they went outside, but I decided to stay in for some reason. <laughs> and that's when I heard him start to laugh. He's just laughing like evil, sinister laugh. Oh, man. And you should see my face. You think my face is white? It was whiter than snow. <laughs> I don't know what the head. I don't know what the head that was, but 
Dave. So and they yes. told me later on we found out that it was the former tenant that um, killed himself in the trailer. Oh wow! Yeah, that's enough to freak you out. Yeah, um, that's when I knew I I must have some gifts to me. <laughs> that, that you can connect that way. Yeah, I think my scariest I've ever had it was when I went to stay a week during the summer with my aunt at an old farmhouse, and already. I'm afraid of the dark. I always have to have an I light, light on. I used to be afraid of the dark. <laughs> I still have to have the light. I don't. I don't like sleeping in the dark. But um, I remember like, it was the first night there. I was already kind of freaked out because they slept with the lights off completely. Hmm. And then I hear my aunt yell upstairs, and she's like, you know, she's yelling at us to knock off the walking around back and forth to quit it. And they're, they're like, we're not walking around. And she made a joke. She's oh, I suppose it's the ghost, right? And I started laughing. And they looked at me. They said, she's serious. And I remember in the middle of the night, all of a sudden, I wake up. I hear screaming and yelling. Can't understand what's being said. Just screaming and yelling. Oh, wow. Cupboard door opening up and slamming, opening up and slamming. And then somebody stomping up the stairs over and over again. I covered my head up, and I didn't look. And the next day I say something to my aunt and she's like, she goes, I didn't hear anything. She said, I don't know what you're talking about. And so a couple of days down the huh. road, we're, um, I think my aunt was grocery shopping or something. My little cousin had gotten in trouble because she was climbing on the furniture and she was supposed to be upstairs in bed. Um, and we're watching The Walking Dead, like the classic one, the black and white oh, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we hear someone walking up upstairs. So we, we go up to yell at my little cousin before my aunt gets back so she doesn't get in trouble. And um, she was sound asleep. We were getting ready to come back down the stairs, and you could hear the steps creaking like somebody <laughs> was walking up the steps. Oh, well. <laughs> Freaked us out, and we run down the stairs. And we sit on the couch, and it's one of the old farmhouses that have, like, the doors to the stairs. <laughs> After we sit there for about a minute, all of a sudden that door just slams shut. Oh man, that was it. I was done. I I wanted to go to my other aunt's house, and I never went back to that house. Like it was like nonstop. I don't blame you. <laughs> and I I guess eventually they ended up moving because after that, probably two or three months down the road, it turned to more like poltergeist activity, huh. where um, things were slamming on the walls and flying off the walls and being thrown, and I. I don't know how how true this is because again I was young, but um, the story I was told about the house it was that it was a male and a female um, farmers, and there was a little boy, and the farmer had actually accidentally ran over his little boy. His little boy was bringing up something out oh, the uh, the fields, and he ran him over with a plow. And he ended up committing suicide after that. Oh. I don't know how how true that is. Um, again, you know, I was young, but yeah, that, I think that was probably probably my scariest. Other things are just mild, like having books tipped over for no reason. Just you know, odds and ends, weird stuff, and the spiritual stuff that comes and goes as you're getting signs and symbols from your guides and angels and all that stuff. Right, since you mentioned suicide, I think we should mention the suicide helpline is always available for those that need help. Yeah. Don't feel like you're left alone. I mean, there's number, I believe it's 988 in, for suicide. I mean, I know I've been there myself. Uh, I'm depressed throughout my life as well. So that's like, so there's always help. <laughs> Sorry, I'd have to throw that out there. No, that's all right. Yeah, the struggle's real. I think, you know, a lot of us sometimes feel alone and stuck in our head with nobody to talk to. And it's not as unusual as people think feeling that way. And there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. Yeah, because when you have these gifts and it makes you feel like you're going crazy or yeah. you're afraid to share them because you don't want to go to the psych word, <laughs> you know? Yeah, especially if, you know, 
you, you have spiritual gifts and you don't understand them and you're having weird experiences and there's nobody around nobody around you that you can share them with because they don't understand and they're just going to think there's something wrong with you right. you're stuck in your own head <laughs> yeah so that's why i think it's important to ground ourselves every day it might seem sad to do that every day <laughs> anyway <Yes. laughs> yeah better than being scattered right that's true we could um person that would help or go to a person that you trust so yeah that's right i think that's why readings are so important oh yeah I sometimes that. people get you know, stuck in their own heads or stuck on some kind of trauma or kind some kind of pattern and readings are just good clarification for where they're at at the moment and the steps they can take to take their life to the next level and make the changes they want to make you know it's a good way to find answers straight from spirit that's true Mm hmm. Is there anything else you like to share? Like, um, any uh, paranormal experiences? Or I know you have, um, must have some that you like to share. <laughs> well, I I don't. For me, it's less paranormal experiences and and more spiritual experiences. Or spiritual, um, I meant to say, yeah. Yeah, the 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 biggest ones that freaked me out were the ones I told when, when I was younger. Um, you know, a lot of it is more the spiritual path of the, the things that I've experienced along the way with that. Um, sort of like, I think when I first started, I was always into the UFO stuff. Uh, I think what really triggered me to delving deep into it was right before COVID hit, I had um, an experience and not necessarily being taken, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden I was on a craft communicating with an ET and they were showing me a timeline of things that were coming up. And at the time I didn't realize um, that they were showing me COVID because COVID hadn't hit yet. And they were just showing me, you know, especially this year is going to be a really big year for disclosure and for things like that that 2024 is going to be another big year where there's a good possibility of having another round of a covid type thing oh wow 2026 is going to be a very impactful year and so is 2029 like huge changes for all of us you know a huge shift we're already starting this shift that's what covid was all about was that's not a feeling <laughs> yeah it, and it was it was to get us back at home get us back into that love space and to see what's really important, but also to shift that energy to a higher vibration. And you saw the people who couldn't handle that vibration. They, they rioted, they caused issues. They went off the wall with the things they were doing, the things they were saying and how they were behaving. Um, so like, it's more for me, those channeling experiences that I have sort of like, you know, archangels. The first time I saw them, I didn't realize what I was seeing until. Aren't they I, amazing? I love seeing them and hearing them. Yeah. And I, I remember this was, this one was a long time ago. I remember coming down the stairs and I could see, you know, from an upstairs apartment and I could see smoke swirling around the light. And I thought that was odd. Mm -hmm. um, walked down the stairs and looked to my right. And I saw these huge orbs of light, a bunch of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> Huge, like red, blue, and green, yellow, and pink. And I, I remember standing there staring at him for a few minutes, like, am I really seeing that? Like, really? And so I kept walking, and I got in my car, and I thought to myself again, did I really see that? And I looked out the window, and there they were again. It's, so, you know, as soon as I had a chance, I looked up what that was and realized that was, you know, orbs of the archangels. And so that's when I really started working with archangels with the realization that they're omnivescent. They don't belong to a certain religion. They belong to everybody. And if you want to use them, use them. Um, right. It's, it's little things like that that stick with me that have changed my life and opened me up even more. Um, I remember, and again, I guess you could consider it a paranormal experience. But for me, I, I was doing a reading and the lady hadn't got there yet. 
But when I was I was channeling and getting the reading ready, I could see a, a male spirit, restless spirit, walking back and forth across the door, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And um, that, that reading kind of disturbed me a little bit because I picked up on a friend she had who had just left her husband. And I said, she needs it. When he comes to her in his car, when she's at her work, you tell her not to get in that car. You tell her to call the police. Because what they showed me was him coming after her and running her running behind her work and trying to hide in the bushes and him killing her. Oh, um, wow. Which the lady made a connection with that because what I was picking up on, she, she validated it. She goes, yeah, she just left her, left her husband. And the male energy that I was seeing ended up being her son. He gave me his name who had just passed away. So I guess in a sense, that's a paranormal experience, but it was based in. Oh, yeah. Meaning. Yeah. Huh. I was going to say, um, I can connect with a couple of the angels, our angel Michael and Gabriel. You know. You work with them a lot? Yeah, sometimes they'll let me see them, especially Michael. He's mm -hmm. huge. <laughs> yeah, I've had some orb, weird orbs uh, encounter. So maybe one of they were angels. Cause, uh, when they visit you twice the same evening, you know, it's probably angel or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're always around. And if you want their help, all you have to do is ask for it, and they'll help you. Oh yeah, it's true. That's what they. I'll just say angels are right there. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. What about you? What are some of your paranormal experiences? Uh, like you said, that's um, one of my earlier ones when I seen that. <clears throat> you beat my voice. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> my voice is dry. <laughs> my throat. <laughs> the allergies don't help either. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's one of my earlier experiences at Orbs. So I know um. You know, it's not dust when it visits you the same time in the you know, different place in the house. I was with my dad, and every time when I was with my dad, I would have something spiritual happen. I remember we, um, it was a house um, we had just moved into, and they ended up, I never really had a, a strong, like, I never had a bad experience there, but I remember my my youngest girl. She was three at the time, quite a long time ago, because she's eighteen now. <laughs> but um, I she was taking stuff upstairs for me, and eventually she she came back downstairs. She goes, "Oh, mom, I don't want to go back upstairs." And I said, "Why not?" She goes, "I don't want to see that black man again." Oh, so okay, all right. And I remember. I don't know if it was the same day, but it was around the same time I was taking pictures of her and every single picture there was an orb. And that house ended up having activity. And what I actually think there was an older gentleman there. And this was before I was into spirituality. Hmm. There was an, I could pick up on an older gentleman there. And then there was, there was something a little bit darker there too. But um, he would do things like the, the older gentleman. I remember we were getting ready to go on a vacation. And I said, don't let me forget the charger for the electric scooter. And so we were leaving and the garage door was still open. It had been open for a while. And we got got in the car and I looked up at the garage door. All of a sudden the light turned on. And I'm like, that's right. The charger. Went and got the charger, got back in the car and the light shut off. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, so he was that kind of spirit. He just wanted to help. Oh, yeah. Hang out. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> I, the darker one, I think, was connected to to my ex. Because I remember one night he just went off on a crazy fit, just going nuts. And he went in to turn on a light, and the light bulb blew up in his face. Oh, well. And he'd always talk about a shadow figure go walking back and forth on the front porch. I actually just kind of thought he was crazy, but after the the light bulb thing blowing up in his face, I kind of believe there was something a little bit more sinister there too. Oh yeah, yeah, that's super scary uh, experiences here. Um, shortly after my husband passed, you know, I was putting away 
here's the thing is here. And I had those empty tubs. You don't know if there was mm -hmm. the story. But anyway, it was yeah. it was behind me and then all of a sudden it started to shake real violently. Just that thing started to shake. At first I thought just try to get to an earthquake, but that was just moving, just that. <laughs> and you know, out here in California, we use those quakes. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, that was the only thing that was moving. So I think that might have been him saying, hey, don't mess with my stuff. <laughs> you long. Put it back. That could be. It's very possible, yeah. I think well. he was getting upset because we're moving out his stuff. Yeah. Anyway, when you get close to the end, is there um, how some people find you and if you work? You share that for me, yeah. Well, yeah, um, they can always reach me at my email, which is millergirls at hotmail.com. So it's M I L L E R G R L S at hotmail.com. If they want to do regression work or readings, um, just contact me and get a hold of me. They can, always, they can also send me a, a friend request at Mary Bassett on Facebook or, you know, shoot me a message through Messenger if they have a question or they need anything or want to do some regression work. And they can also, um, I have the Voices of Contact. That's a great show. show. I do. Yeah, it is. I It's, and, um, because I've worked with so many different ET experiencers and the majority of them allowed me to use their regressions on the show. And so we have a great panel with Deb and RJ, Michael Carter, um, our newest member, Deb Cobble, who is a huge experiencer. Um, and she was in Bud Hopkins' book that he wrote, huh. her experiences were in there. And basically, I take the regression, break it down, and they comment on it, which is perfect because like, I, I don't have huge experiences, like my own, like where I've been taken or anything like that. Yeah. So I can give feedback on that regression, but through the show, the listener, the person who did the regression can listen in and get that feedback and get a better understanding of what they experience. So they get more answers and they get more healing, yeah. more information. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they grow way more from that experience than they ever thought they would. I, I enjoy and it. They can find it on a Mystical, Awak Mystical Awakenings podcast on YouTube. Friday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Very right, awesome. And speaking of Devin RJ, they were on our show as well. So I got to talk to They're them. <laughs> yeah. I love them. Yeah, yes. We should have all you guys on me. Yeah, we can do that. I have more than one person. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah, that'll be fun. So I think we get out of eight to ten people. Do you have a I have a fun question? Do you have a bucket list that you want to visit near fire? Uh, a bucket list? Are there places or places you like to visit? Gosh, oh, <laughs> I want to. I've been to Salem. I would love to go back to Salem. Oh yeah, but I really want to go to New Orleans badly. That's where my late so, husband's been, from. Really? Yeah. But yeah. I've never been there. Hopefully, uh, I've been there one time. <laughs> I'd like to go to, you know, Charleston, any place southern. You know, I think I must have lived the past life or something during the Civil War. And, uh, you know, I was a southerner because I'm really drawn to those places and the history and the feel of it. Um, love to go visit some Civil War sites. Those would be my bucket list places. Yeah, those are good ones, too. I wouldn't mind going back, back east as well. My family from Kansas and Colorado. And, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. My uncle had a farm. One time that reminds me, my cousin and I, um, we went hiking in the back of that farmhouse. Not too far, we stumbled on an old man graveyard. Oh, really? So I think that's when it started for me. <laughs> She's like, you remember that? Well, yeah. Of course, it scared me to death. <laughs> It always starts somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. But it, it was kind of sad, though, because it wasn't well-tipped. Um, 
and you probably can't even see it now, it's probably very kind of sad, but yeah, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> So anyway, I'll see. Do you have a favorite book or author? Oh, Did you share this for me? Right now, I'm not gonna lie. Like my my most favorite books are like historical romances. Again, it goes back to that southern thing. Uh, typically, I don't like reading books that are in the here and now. I like to go back in time. Um, but right now, I'm actually reading. The Mayfair Witches by Anne Rice. Um, oh yeah, I've heard about it. I haven't read that. I yet. saw the TV. I, well, I haven't seen the TV show yet. It was just a big to do, and everybody was loving the show. And I thought about watching, and I'm like, you know what? If they made it into a show, it must be a really good series of books. So I, I picked up those books, and that's what I'm reading right now. And it is. It's a great series. The first book is very, very good. Um, but it's it's long and detailed, a lot of information because it's trying to give you the, the whole history of everything. So it's kind of tedious. And oh, right, right. But it is a really good book, really good. And so I'm looking forward to the next two as soon as I get that one done. But I love to read. That's cool. That's that's one of my favorite things to do is read. Unless I have. To read. I like to read it, right? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't like to read if I have to. Right. That's true. I do it for <laughs> reading. If I read for too long, it'll make me fall asleep. <laughs> That's true. Yes, it will. But I know, like, um, Head of Ram, she does a lot of horror. Oh, yeah. Fiction. Non-fiction, I think. And um, there's Stephen King, of course. <laughs> Always, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm not a great writer as he is, but yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> I, I think okay. <laughs> I've read a, a couple of his books. It was a long time ago that I did for Stephen King, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize there's both, you know, there's Shining, then there's Film and also a book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of the, my favorite ones I've read is like the Amityville Horror. When I was younger, I read that one. Oh, yeah, I like that too. The books are always better than the movies. Always. I don't know if I'm allowed to share, but this is the yeah. all collection of the Conjuring films, one, two, and three. Oh, I bet that's good then. Yeah, it's um, pretty cool. It shows the grocery. Here it has the devil made me do it. Yeah, I'm so funny for some reason. <laughs> So I think I'm also no. part of the foundation, the Warren Foundation. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's amazing. I've been a part of member for a year now. And also, I want to, uh, while we hear them before we head off, I want to give sponsors a shout out. So, we have two sponsors Jay B. Hill and uh, Studio Six Paranormal Entertainment, and then Brian J. Laverty. Uh, parent post, so thank you guys and them <laughs> for allowing this to happen. After the, you know, parent of a king, I was wondering where I missed go from there. <laughs> and then they come along and ask me, like, yes, of course. So I love doing the radio. Nice. So, even though I don't have the greatest voice, but I try. <laughs> hey, that's all we can do, right? <laughs> Better than not trying. That's true. We gotta start somewhere. That's right. Do you have any shout outs for anything you'd like to share before? Well, I guess my biggest shout out would be to my husband for putting up with all my crap. Oh. That poor guy. He's very, very patient. He puts up with me going all over the place all the time. That's cool. And then I guess the, the big shout out to Devin RJ. And yeah. the rest of the crew for going along with me and working with me and supporting the vision of creating my show or creating our show, really, because it's not a show without them. They are I'm not allowed to call them experts, but they are the more knowledgeable ones. So, right. It's like I'm always learning. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, let's see. 
this one towards the end here. But, um, yeah, now I have tons of more questions. Maybe I have to save that for another show. <laughs> so, not already. <laughs> so, let's see here. Yeah. So, I really don't even ask half of these questions. But, thank you for sharing your experiences. And, hopefully, I can have another um, question done. I look forward to those. <laughs> Yeah. We'll do it again. You can ask me all the questions you want. All right. I won't run my mouth. <laughs> no, thank you um, for everything. And keep up with your work, all you guys. And uh, I look forward to your shows as well. You might share them when your shows are. It's Friday night, right? Tonight. Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Myst Mystical Awakenings Vodcast YouTube. Awesome. So I look forward to that, guys. And uh, you yeah, take care. And I think next week, We'll have Ron Stokes. Wait, no, wait. 25th. Sorry, if I have my calendar. <laughs> 25th, we have kind of a investigator, uh, Ron Stokes, with us. And he's been on my previous podcast. And so I'm really glad to welcome him back. So thank you, Mary. And um, thank you. you're always welcome back with us. Maybe next time I'll have you, Mary. Um, and um, Dem and RJ, right? And, yeah, yeah, remember. <laughs> yeah. And share with their experiences as well. And um, you have a great, safe week. Um, so thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. Mary. Bye, guys. You're welcome. Have a great night. <laughs> you too. Thanks. Bye, guys. See you in this riot. <laughs> One time I forgot to start the lemon. <laughs> anyway, bye guys. <laughs>